Hi everyone, this is Miss J. Welcome to another read aloud video. This week I bring you Tashunka, uh, Lakota horse legend. But before I start, I'm just gonna address a couple of things real quick. The first one, oh, you might have seen it in the background, um, is that the cats are here today. So hopefully they'll let us do a read aloud as usual. You might see Doc's tail over here. The second one is that it's fairly cloudy today, so I'm sitting in front and across two windows. So I have a window back here and a window in front of me. Hopefully this way you'll be able to see the pictures okay and you'll be able to see me okay. Um, as always, I will be asking questions as we go along and you can always answer those in your daily reading logs or in our Google Classroom. I'm going to focus a lot on plot, theme, characters, settings, and all the, these story elements. So if you need a quick revision on what those are, just check out our um, Star People video, which should be the one previous to this one. Um, and there I have a quick revision before I start telling the story of what all those things are. Like I said, the title of our reading today is Tashunka, a Lakota horse legend. So I have a quick thought on is this story going to be a non-fiction story or a fiction story? And what does that mean? Um, today I'm reading from this book, which is a three books in one, which is called Tatanka and other legends of the Lakota people. There's a couple copies in our classroom library as well. But this is what the Shunka looks like as a standalone book. I'm sure you can also recognize Muskrat and Skunk, which we also have in our library and we read in a read aloud last year. Right, Doc? <clears throat> when Mother Earth was young, all things on her surface were learning their place. One day, a young warrior of the plains was hunting for game to feed his family. But game was hard to find. The winter had been long, and there were few animals in the area close to camp. The young man searched far from home to find new places to hunt. He came to a stream in a wooded area and knelt down to quench his thirst. A sharp noise made him lift his head. Out of the corner of his eye, he glimpsed movement and a flash of color. He froze and used all his skills as a hunter to sense this new game. But he was too slow. Quiet had returned to the woods. The hunter walked towards the place where he had seen something move and found tracks in the earth. They were unlike any he knew. Curious and needing to find food for his family, he followed the trail. So we're gonna take a pause here. And I want you to think about who's the main character of this story. And also try to predict what's gonna happen next in our plot. So he's gonna follow the trail. Where's that trail gonna lead? What are those creatures? For days, he tracked the unseen animal, if animal it even was. About ready to give up, he felt the ground rumble. Hundreds of beasts with fire surrounding their heads and flowing from their bodies thundered past him. The whole herd was as swift as the wind. He ran after them, but the animals were faster than he was. He fell farther and farther behind. As he cleared the top of a ridge, he suddenly dropped flat onto the ground. The herd had stopped to drink from a stream just ahead of him. All the beasts shimmered in the sun in colors he had never seen before. Red, blue, 
yellow and green, flowed along their necks and tails. Their beauty dazzled the young warrior. He followed them for weeks across the plains. He learned their movements and habits. He wanted to catch one so that he could travel as fast as the wind. So here's our warrior. And here are the creatures that he's following. What are these creatures? At last, he found himself close to one of the younger animals. The warrior talked to the pony in a quiet voice and rubbed its flank. The pony allowed the young man onto his back, and together they learned to cover the miles quickly. The young man trained other horses until one day he noticed that the sun's heat was weaker and the nights were becoming cold. His time away from his tribe and family had grown too long. He gathered his mounts and journeyed home. He whooped as he got close to his camp, and family members ran from the teepees to greet him. They stopped in fear as they saw his new companions. Young and old watched with wide eyes and fearful murmurs as the warrior rode into camp with his small, with his small herd of colorful ponies. The young man showed his people how to touch the animals and then to ride them. The tribe began to hunt and travel farther than they had before. They had no trouble finding game. Soon, they had plenty to eat and new clothes to wear. The tribe became wealthy and strong. They took pride in their newfound strength. They started pushing other tribes out of their path. They claimed lands that before had been used by everyone. All who stood in their way were driven out. The Great Spirit looked on in sadness. Tashunka, the horse, had been his gift to all the people. Instead, one tribe was abusing the gift. They were growing wealthy while others were going hungry. So the Great Spirit took the gift away. Before I continue, have a pause and think. Why do you think the Great Spirit took the gift away? What is one Lakota value that this tribe wasn't following? They weren't living by it. And what do you think is going to happen next? Once again, all people were the same. Walking the earth and finding life hard. They missed the Shunka. Many centuries passed. The elders told the story of Tashunga to the children of the tribe. As they grew up, they remembered the gift of the Great Spirit, but they also knew that the horse had been taken away because they had used it to hurt others. One day, a warrior was out hunting. He saw a bright light twinkling in the distance. He worked his way closer and discovered a strange man riding an animal he had never seen before. The warrior remembered the stories of his elders and knew that the animal must be Tashunga, the horse. In the years that followed, more strangers passed through the land. These newcomers brought many horses with them. Soon, the tribes had horses again. The return of Tashunka to the plains people was the Great Spirit's way of forgiveness. The people of the plains became wealthy as the horse re-entered their camps, and great horsemen rode the plains once again. This is the end of our story, and as we finish, think about a couple interesting questions. The first one is, 
what's the theme of this story? Think about the plot, think about the characters, think about the things that those characters do. What is the lesson that this legend is trying to teach us? The next question is, why do you think I chose this story for today's Read Aloud? Why is it important to hear the story? And the third question is, what does this remind you of? What's another story? What's another time in your life that you can relate, that you can think about when you're reading this book? I hope everybody is staying safe and healthy. I miss you all. I miss being at school, but we're all in this together and you'll have a new video next week. Until then, stay safe.